Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part 19 of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, I'm going to show you some hidden and special features that will help speed up your workflow and get better results out of your Audacity projects. So I have five features that I'm going to be sharing with you today to help you to get the best out of your audio. If you watched the course from the beginning, you may have stumbled across some of them already. Um, I've mentioned a couple of them, but there will be some new ones and I'm going to go into exactly how you can use them on your audio today. So I recommend catching all five. So the first feature I want to show you is labels. This is going to really speed up your workflow uh, and, and help you keep organized. If you haven't already used labels, you'll find them in the menu bar under the edit menu and then go down to labels and add label at, at selection. You can also press control B or command B to add one in. Now, if you've got some, if you've got a piece of audio in there, um, you'll be able to add labels just by pressing that control B shortcut at different points of the song. So for example, at the beginning, you could have intro. Just by clicking in that little box and then typing a label, then you could have chorus, chorus one. Oh my goodness. And you could have chorus one and so on and split your audio up. Then when you save your project and reopen them, they'll still be there for next time. There are a couple of other things you can do with labels. You can use this to drag them around in case you make any edit edits to the, to the music or to, for, uh, to a podcast, for example. If you make changes, you can, you can move these to suit. Um, you can also go back into the labels menu and go into edit labels and then just view all of the labels you have here. You can then make changes to the, to the whole thing. It can also be useful for cues. For example, if you're recording something and then you want to send your Audacity project to somebody else uh, and, and they need to know where their parts are, or for example, or where they need to speak or answer your questions, um, you can have these labels in and, and, and just make really, really clear notes on what they need to do. And number two is the play at speed toolbar. You'll find this is one of the last toolbars on, on the top part of the screen. Uh, if you can't see it, you can go down to view toolbars and click on play at speed toolbar to make it appear. Now, basically what this does is lets you play music or whatever audio you're using at a different speed. So for example, this is currently on one at the moment. If we hit play as we normally do or, or click play on the toolbar, It's going to play the music at the normal speed but then if you drag this down or you can double click and manually type in say 0.5 if you click on that button again the, the special play button there it's going to play in half speed or you can do double time and up to three times speed now this is great if you just want to uh, speed through listening to something if you're trying to try, trying to find some uh, some some mistakes or anything like that or you can go in half speed if you're trying to to learn a piece of music you want to listen back to yourself playing um, and figure out any where you went wrong it's just another useful little tool this next one number three is one of the most useful tools there is when you're editing if you've already seen the editing videos you'll be familiar with this um, but it's good to go over it because it is just that important it's sync lock so if you go on to tracks in the menu bar and click on sync lock tracks You'll see these little clocks appear on, on all your tracks. Now, whatever you do to one, it's going to do to the rest of them. So for example, if I just highlight this top track and click delete, it's going to delete uh, the same, same, level, the same uh, amount of audio from all the tracks. Likewise, if you want to move things around with the, uh, the time shift tool, it's going to move everything in tandem. Now, if you don't want to move all of them, but you want to move some of them, just say the top three, say the top ones are the vocals and you just want to shift the vocals along. If you just add a label, as you normally would, Control-B or Command-B, and move this label track up to where you want the break to be. And there you go. You can see the top ones have those clock icons. They're sync locked. If we move those, now you'll see all those are moving along. And then the bottom tracks are in a separate group. Another useful tool, especially when editing, is Snap 2. If you look right at the bottom of the project window here, you've got this Snap 2 option. By default, that's going to be off. 
but you've got two other options. You've got nearest and prior. Now what Snap 2 does is when you click anywhere on your audio using the selection tool, it snaps it to the nearest sample or second, um, whatever you've chosen basically. So if we zoom in, just to give you an idea, currently we're set to seconds. So as the audio moves along, you can see it's counting seconds. So by default, the snap to option is gonna be switched off, but if we turn it to nearest or prior, it's gonna turn it on. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna snap our selection to the nearest um, whatever is set here. So for example, we've got seconds set here. Um, so that's gonna turn on snapping for thousandth of a second, because that's the smallest measurement that Audacity can do in seconds. If you select a piece of audio, you can see that it's snapping um, at the bottom there. It's, it's doing exactly uh, one thousandth of a second each little movement we do. Whereas if that's off, it's just gonna be smooth and, and it's it's less precise basically. So if, if you do need to do some really precise editing, Snap2 can be very helpful. And the final special feature that I wanna show you is probably the most useful actually. Uh, if you go into the tools toolbar here and select this asterisk, you get the multi-tool. And that basically does most of what the other tools can do, but in one. Um, so if you if you use this a lot and you get used to it, it can really speed up your editing process. So if I'm here, you'll see that the icon is, is the selection tool and it will just allow me to select as usual. If you go up at the top, you've got the envelope tool, um, which allows you to do everything that the envelope tool can do. And then if you hold the control key or the, the command key on Mac, it turns it into the time shift tool so you can move things around. So again, if you make use of lots of different tools, uh, that can really speed things up for you. If you're not confident with the basics yet, just keep practicing. It's worth making sure you're completely confident and then, then you can start playing around with some of these tools. In part 20, I'm gonna show you my top 10 effects plugins that come with Audacity. Some of them we've taken a brief look at already, some of them we haven't. But there are loads of plugins that come with Audacity and I'm gonna show you which ones are worth using and which ones you can safely ignore. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss that episode. Leave a like if this video helped you and let me know in the comments section below. What's the most useful tool or feature of Audacity for you? And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 20.